Okay, hello, and Happy New Year. So, if you're new to the channel, I use data science to answer questions that are mostly stupid, sometimes serious, and today we're tackling a fun little project surrounding slang and the crazy year that was 2020. Basically, the question driving the project is, can we use data science to determine the hottest slang words of 2020? The methodology for this project was borrowed from one of the Pudding's old articles explaining this exact concept. The idea is that in order to identify a slang word that found growth during the year 2020, you need to identify words that rose in interest during the year and were basically dormant for the years prior. But I know what you're thinking, wouldn't that methodology just give you a list of current events, things like Donald Trump or Kobe Bryant? Well, no, because we're specifically looking for words that people are searching for the definitions of. So looking at the Puddings example from 2018, one of the top trending words was uwu. People were searching, what is uwu? Or uwu definition. No one is going to be searching for the definition of Donald Trump. It's a very smart way to identify words that emerge during the year and that most people don't necessarily know what that word means. Like slang. Oh, and we're using Google Trends data for all of this methodology. Before we get into the top 10 list of words for 2020, I want to throw a couple of examples your way just to make sure we're all on the same level of understanding here. Because words that rose in popularity during 2020, maybe they saw a renaissance, won't necessarily qualify using the methodology that we're using here. For example, the word pog became extremely popular this year, mostly due to Twitch and the creators there. But pog is obviously a word that first rose to prominence in the 90s and the current renaissance we're seeing of the word is like a reinvigoration. It's not a new word, even if the use case of it is new. The same thing is true of WAP, for example, this year, it rose in popularity, obviously, due to Cardi B's song, which was a new use case for the word, but I guess WAP has many meanings um, and it's been used in the past too. Like a, a few other words that I think are good to take a look at, like Karen, for example, first got popular last year, only increased in popularity this year, but it's not slang of 2020, it's slang of 2019. Gaslighting is a similar story. Gaslighting, even though it became more popular this year, it's always been a word and people have always used it. It's not a new emerging word, it's just a word that found a new use. And that's the same story for based. Side note, why does the graph of interest for based look like seasonal almost? <laughs> and so I say all that, but that doesn't mean that old words can't make the list because Google's method of measuring interest in a word is really whack. <laughs> so what Google does is it takes the search volume numbers for each word and then rescales those values from zero to 100, which means that the popularity is relative to itself. So even if a word was searched like often enough, let's say a word was searched 50 times in 2016 and then it was searched like 50 million times that, so like 500 million in this year, those 50 times would basically be zero. Um, and that's an extreme case, but I'm just saying here, like my methodology of trying to gauge like if a word is popular now and it wasn't popular in previous years, it all depends on the search volume. So you might on this list see like words that like technically have been in use before, but like essentially all of the words on this list, like the use in 2020 absolutely dwarfs the use cases for that word in previous years. For most of them, the use case for these words was almost zero, but for the ones that were non-zero, it's because the search just dwarfed it. And now the top 10. These aren't in any particular order because of what I was saying earlier, the way that Google quantifies search interest doesn't lend itself to comparison really easily. There is a method to compare them, but for whatever reason, when I was passing in more than like five words, the API was giving me a bad request error. So I couldn't compare all 10 words in relation to each other. So I don't know if this list is exactly like one to 10 perfect order, but generally it is from 10 to one, one being the most popular, 10 being the least popular. 
Okay, and with that, finally, the top 10. So number 10 is Wasp Mom. I actually hadn't heard of this one. It's one that originated on TikTok, apparently. So WASP stands for White Anglo-Saxon Protestant. So these are, this is obviously not the most laudatory of terms. The term WASP mom is essentially the Karen of 2020. Um, there's a lot of TikToks that are making fun of the prototypical suburban white mom and how she reacts to both her kids and kids of other families. Uh, so yeah, WASP mom making its way at number 10 of this list. Number nine is WFH, which stands for work from home or working from home. I don't think anyone needs an explanation as to why this made it onto the list. Uh, 2020 saw an explosion in remote work. Uh, people obviously were using the WFH abbreviation on Slack, on Teams, on whatever chat system you use to communicate with your coworkers. And a lot of people were probably like, what the fuck is WFH? <laughs> what is it? So yeah, WFH, working from home. Number eight is BIPOC, which stands for Black Indigenous Person of Color. It doesn't refer to someone who is both Black Indigenous and a person of color. It's just a term that people like to use to refer to people of color, um, but like it a little bit more because it emphasizes Black and Indigenous people which are the groups who are unfortunately uh, subject to a very different kind of oppression than the other people of color are. So it makes sense to call them out in this way. So BIPOC, Black Indigenous People of Color. So this is a year where people were engaging in a lot of discussions surrounding race, racism, racial identity, uh, oppression, and you had a lot of people wanting to learn maybe, or wanting to engage in discussions that they previously hadn't. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that this term made the list. It is both a new term and a term that fit the moment. Uh, that was 2020. So BIPOC, number eight. Number seven, social distance. Maybe not slang in the traditional sense, but this is a new term, a new grouping of words that we probably haven't ever used before. Um, and so I don't know if people were really Googling like what is social distance. Maybe they were like social distance definition just to make sure that they were doing it properly. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting microcosm that was of the year of 2020. And we'll be seeing more of those. Speaking of, number six is epidemic. Uh, so this is what I was saying earlier where it's like, even if a word has been searched for before, that doesn't mean it won't make it on the list because epidemic is obviously a word that's been around for a long time. People have probably Googled the definition of epidemic before the year 2020, but after the year 2020, when COVID-19 was declared an epidemic, people were probably like, oh shit, what does that mean? What is an epidemic? Um, so yes, epidemic hit the list here. Number six, number five, asymptomatic. Another word that COVID-19 has gifted us. Yeah, people, may not be Googling what is asymptomatic in order to know what it means, but what is asymptomatic in order to know what do I look for? Um, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, there's a quite a few of those on the list where it's like, it's not slang in the sense that like people don't know what it is and they need the definition of it. It's like people want to confirm their understanding of the word in order to better their health and the health of people around them. Along those lines, number four is quarantine. Man, this list is depressing. People might not know the word quarantine. People might have been looking for what the specifications for quarantine are. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate <laughs> at this point. Like, I don't really know uh, the vocabulary level of people. This is global, by the way. This is not just the US. Number three, finally, we got a true slang word, simp. The word simp took over the internet this year. It was honestly kind of annoying. The amount of YouTube thumbnails, Twitch chats, Reddit comments, Twitter tweets, you get the idea. An overblown word, but that's something you would expect from a word that made it to the top of the list for 2020's hottest slang. The definition of simp, how do I even, I guess it's a derogatory term uh, to, that people use to convey that someone is perhaps submissive or uh, worshiping 
something, typically women, but it really could be like people say like, oh, I'm simping for like Jamba Juice. People could say I'm simping for wheat thins or hummus or other foods because I'm hungry. <laughs> um, you get the idea. Simp for just basically means like, oh, that's a fave. Okay, the second most common term is furlough. Lots of people's jobs have been furloughed this year, unfortunately. And a lot of people were probably Googling, what the fuck does that mean? Like, is it firing? Is it laid off? Like, blah, like I don't know. It, yeah, so furlough is typically the word you use when someone is laid off due to economic conditions, economic, like external economic stress. And that unfortunately has happened to a lot of people this year. Fuck this list, man. And of course, the number one slang term for 2020 is the coronavirus. I don't think anyone's surprised here. This is definitely a word that few people have used in previous years. And now in the year 2020, it has really come to dominate every facet of conversation. So yes. Lots of people searching, what the fuck is the coronavirus, definition of coronavirus. It makes a ton of sense that people would search for this word that was previously unheard of and now really rules every aspect of our life. So yes, a fitting end to this list um, that has in many ways been marked by COVID-19. So I don't think I have to say that most of the words on this list aren't traditional slang words. These aren't words that like bubbled up in communities or like are lighthearted or mostly used by young people you know in previous years the top of the charts would be something like woke or in this year probably would have been simp like words that are wholly born out of the internet and aren't hugely influenced by the real world but yeah no unfortunately the way this year went the slang list was more of a reality check than it was a fun little project but yeah, just one of the many, 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 many casualties because of COVID-19. And in the grand scheme of things, this one doesn't matter that much. It is a shame because I had this whole other methodology planned for examining each of the words on this list, like, and seeing where each of these slang words came from and which communities they found popularity in and which communities propped up the word. Maybe I'll do that for 2019 slang if there's enough interest, but it doesn't feel right for me to say like which demographic is responsible for bringing us the popularity of quarantine, <laughs> right? Uh, that's something where you would mostly ask like, oh, where did the word woke come from? Oh, like, oh, where did the word pog come from? Where did that find popularity? Maybe I'll do that for 2019 terms or if there's like words that you in the comments are interested in me examining the examining the origins of from a data science perspective, I would happily do that. So yeah, that's it for this video. A bit of a downer, unfortunately, but hey, new year, new vaccine, and maybe a new hope for better, more poppy slang words. I will do my best to contribute um, and prop up the words that I like. That's it. Follow me on Twitter at Vastava underscore to stay up to date with me and my projects. Uh, subscribe and like to see everything that comes out in the new year because I have a lot of exciting videos planned. Um, and as always, there will be a hint for my next video at the end of this video. And I will catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.